Kenny Command. I got you, man. That, that's fair. Because we at least have listened to the catalog. Oh yeah, the multiple most. times, multiple times. I, okay, I'm I'm curious because John was saying that he listened to it. I think what four times since Monday yesterday. Yes, pretty much. All right, Andrew skimmed a few songs on each album, which is fine. So we I, actually. <laughs> we I, I think the, the album I've listened to the most is probably Crystals. I fucking love Crystals. I. I want to say Crystals is my most listened to, but it might be We Are the Mess. I mean, yeah, I got that that Crystal flag you sold me on my ceiling. So, <laughs> I dude, I want to post that in the flag group and just say, hey, by the way, this was a flag that exists. Have fun yeah, this exists. It. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Dude, I didn't even know that flag there. group is such a mess. Oh uh, my god! Today yeah. it's been a joke, but yeah. I saw. I rejoined. I think a few days ago because I was almost thinking about. Selling my flags. Oh, don't sell the every time I die one. That's I flex. want to because a flex I. and a half. It really is because I've never seen another one like it. Besides the white one. Right, but yours is like the. Is faded. Dirty, faded kind of thing. Yeah, I've never, I haven't seen that one yet. I've almost, I thought about it and I, I rejoined and it's, it's been a shit show. Normally, yeah. it's, it's weird. Today's been like the worst day I think I've seen. It has, aside from the stuff that happened with Caleb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Outside that was of bad. that, today's been the weirdest day. But. Andrew, did you ever contact Andrew about the flag? No, I don't think I haven't. Well, <laughs> you should, because I'll send you one. Yeah, it's true. He will. Okay. Just send him a, like a screenshot of your receipt. Okay. All right. Well, then. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. What band are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Nesmo <clears throat> Callboy, but I didn't know if you wanted to do mail first. I mean, yeah, we could do mail. I didn't take any of my mail out, so I can just talk. I could just say it. All right. Oh, I, yeah. I have mine John. set inside somewhere. What? You should show the vinyl. I should, but it's in the getting ready to move pile. Oof. But so hey, I'd, uh, I'd have to wait up. until 28th, seven more days. Hope so. Everything was good hey. so far. Look, I mean, you, you'll be fine. You'll get the house. I mean, you already have the house. It's just signing the papers. <laughs> yeah. As long as it all goes well. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I think I got a couple Born of a Sour shirts and then that Ice Nine Kill set list, and that's it. Which Ice Nine Kill <laughs> set list did you get? They all, all of them. <laughs> yeah, every single <laughs> show, of every show on every tour. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> The one that that guy was selling that he put up for offers, I was like, get your tail. Get... Okay. So, I mean, that I works. Know. It's a printed piece of paper that's signed. I don't know what the offer on it. Like, set lists are a weird thing. That's a really weird Honestly, thing. I only have, I think, like three of them. I, I, got, I, got I have four. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have any. I have three or four. But... I just have a lot of, like, shirts and shit. Mine's like, all I remember. I remember the 2015 Escape the Fate tour, I got handed one there, and then LA handed me one for the 2015 Supposed to Buy tour. Uh, you've been a lucky prick getting some of your stuff. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I wish that, I had that Devin Townsend pick that you got. Nam. Well, yeah, my, my friend Zach has that because I got that for him, but I do Still, have I mean, some of his. The how fact you that got you got it. it. Yeah. yeah. The fact that you have that. <laughs> I think the thing I have the most of is definitely Miss May I. That's mine's vinyl. You say you're you're pretty yeah. close to finishing that variant collection up, right? Yeah, I just need those two monument variants, and no one's gonna sell them I, to me. Dude, I no hate one. the fact that I had them in my cart on Merch Now when they uh, like stocked them, and I was like, you know what? I get paid tomorrow. Like I could have spared the money. I could wait. Day. Yeah. But I was like, I'd rather wait just to be saved in case. Like, like my luck is I'd press check and I was like, oh hey, Ice Nine kills demos. Mm -hmm. Like. All right, that's oh, fine. that would be great, right? Uh -huh. That would be my luck, but it ended up. I'm like, three oh, variants wait. away from finishing Texas in July variant collection. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that's you okay. need the white one. I don't need. Yeah, I do. I think I'm missing like a few more blueprints, and then I'm good on wage war. Oof, that that's white one's the worst to get. I know where I can find blood. The work. bone splatter. 
Not at that. I'm talking about Texas in July still. I was going to say. The white, like, out of 15 I am or whatever? Out of 30. Oh. Okay. I, that's I, better I, than 15. I know somebody who has it, and I'll beg them for it. But you I know where I can get it. the black, and I know where I can get uh, blood work. Luckily, I was just pretty much handed a deathless test press, so I was happy about that. <laughs> I was offered a test press at uh, one of the Texas in July albums, but I, I'm not dropping 250 on it. No oh way. boy, yeah. I think I think the Which what I happened? spent was probably my limit. I'm so happy I didn't I didn't have to pay for my two plus the fall ones. Look, shut up! Bless you got the, them directly bro, from what? Fearless, and I hate you. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's not fair. I well, I got one from Rise and one from Fearless. Okay. Which well, one do you have from Rise? Uh, so those are behind. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it's not fair. You messaged <laughs> the guy that runs the test press area on Fearless. He's like, "Yeah, I'll send you one." I message him. He's like, "Oh yeah, the Iceland kills ones. I'm not allowed to send out." Like, really? Yeah. Okay, man. I, I mean, sure. You have I, like four others. I wonder if I can get an under with one then. I don't know. I think Maybe. they sold them all. Don, who knows? I don't know. Well, I guess then we'll get into it. We'll talk show, about. I thought you were going to show more. Andrew had mail, right? Oh That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a few. Like, yeah, look. I mean, besides I the past variant collection you got there. I actually I got like the sweater and one of the vinyls. this year. I'm getting my other package. What'd on you my just bed. say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if my vinyl for the path is shipped yet. Oh crap! Yeah, this, was, uh, this one. It's a weird and double mint. Oh yeah, I got the uh, I think the Apollo or the Athena. I don't remember which one. I didn't get any. I got all of them. Fair enough. It's, so you like Fit for a King? I mean, I enjoyed Fit for a King when I saw them live, but oh yeah, I mean they're yeah. they're good live. I really enjoyed their last album, but I... Dark Skies. Yeah, oh, this one's really there. good, John. You'll like it. I know. I was gonna get you around. Said the you didn't like it at first. The, the yeah, only... the, that's just the first time around. But now I've listened to it a bunch of times. Yeah, that's I what mean, I you did. You could do that with about that's half fair. the bands we've listened to already. <laughs> I was gonna say I haven't I... listened to them. Right. <laughs> that was... oh, that's nice. Yeah. America, hell yeah. And then I got this one. Wait, that doesn't have anything on the back. But it did. <laughs> but it has the path on the, the front. Hell yeah. I got the uh the tan embroidered one, but I don't know. I was gonna say I saw, I did thing. see the tan one. I'm like, okay, that that's a nice color for a hoodie. Yeah, I think that's that'd be like my first tan hoodie. So I was like, yeah, why not? I was going to say, I think all of mine are like either black or in the middle black. I, yeah. I have like one white hoodie, and it was uh, it's a Crown the Empire one, but that's about it. I have a white Born of Osiris one. Oh, I have the green um, Christmas one that I sent Kills did. God, I feel so bad for you with that. Every ninth, man. Every ninth. Oh, ninth. just wait. It's, it's like every ninth, and then. And then, and then later. some. <laughs> yeah. Wait, guess what? Uh, I don't. I can't. I probably can't. I don't know. What? Because we're allowed to add people to it, but we can't. I don't know. I was told not to talk about the thing that I added you to, John. I mean, it doesn't work for me at all. Right. But I was told not to talk about it. But they're also like, hey, you can invite people to make accounts that can see the sign up thing for it. So I don't know. Who's saying that? Them? Yeah, the email I got was like, hey, don't talk about it. But like, okay. All, but like all of the people testing it are like, here. I, I can't get it to work whatsoever. I think it's more so don't talk about what's in the app. I mean, I want to listen to what's in the app, but mm, it just it's does. It's tasty. It's weird. tasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's tasty. Uh. But yeah, there's. Let's just say Iceman Kills is doing something else this year that's going to be on top of Nightmare on the Ninth. I mean, the price isn't too bad for it. No, it's not. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's just the fact that. Well, it's also only once a year, so I'm fine with it. Yeah, so it comes out to be like five bucks a month. So yeah, I think five six dollars a month for what they're giving you. It's worth it. What they're giving me, it's not worth it. 
Right. Now, for that, it's like I still have to buy the merch on top of it. I'm guessing they're going to have uh, exclusive merch to this. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's only available there. I'm no, so geez. sorry, Bryce. It's I'm fine. So sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Bryce. <laughs> I love them. Uh, if I didn't like the songs this much, I would not be doing this. <laughs> or the merch. It's been in there a while. Yeah. Like, let's be real. They have, they have some of the best merch in the game right now. Yeah, forgot and my that. band has the worst. <laughs> Under a really bad merch. <laughs> they said the fuck word. They did. <laughs> the naughty boys. Yeah, they naughty do that. boys. But their merch is just terrible. Speaking of that word, I'm pretty sure it's the most abundant word in the Eskimo Cowboy EP. Oh, yeah. Almost. Did you Probably. Kill? Other what than like the... the most abundant one, John. I don't I mean, know because there's a lot of combinations of words. It's true, but if we're saying that, pl- okay, we're saying the root word plus all the combinations. Yeah, probably. Probably. Then. Yeah, I mean, he says I was hit by a lightning and fucked by your mom, so I guess. <laughs> I, I told when you, you when we started recording. Right. My favorite line. <laughs> Well, we'll go right into it, Bryce. Let's start. Yeah, let's start. Um, the really, really, honestly, let's be real. Their first EP isn't bad. It's like, not bad. When you think of bands in 2010 that were putting out their first EP or like first album. I mean, it's good yeah. middle of the road transcore stuff. Right. Like it holds up. Like even now, it still feels like a. Like it doesn't feel like it aged. Yeah, for no, the time I, that it was released, I mean, it's pretty it good. It aged well. Yeah. yeah, it aged well. Yeah, it definitely has signs of, you know, this is an old album. Right. You like know, it's with how it's produced and whatnot. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But. Hey. Musically, great. Yeah. Lyrically, though. Lyrically, whatever. But, like, vocally, those breeze. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and they've like got what that. other transcore band in twenty ten? Well, I guess a lot were doing threes, but they're not. Yeah. So well, I guess, but transcore. It was more like, I guess, earlier deathcore and shit like that. Right. It was like I'm thinking of like early to the rats to the wolves, um, fail emotions and stuff like that. But yeah. even then, they're more so <laughs> focused on like dubstep with it instead of EDM. Oh yeah. Like, I think that's the thing that Eskimo Cowboy did better is, like, instead of focusing on, like, the Skrillex kind of electronic stuff, they were just like, hey, we'll do just EDM, like, lighter stuff that's more fun. But, that's probably the best word to use for it. Fun. Yeah, fun. Okay. I mean, that, it's fun. That's, like, they, that's literally what they said. They had made hype a hype before. Is the only right. purpose was it for it to be fun. And I mean, that, even and that exploded. started off as a Oh, joke. yeah. Oh yeah, like the band was a joke. The name was a joke, and they all just ran with it. So yep, <laughs> I mean it's fun with it. Oh you yeah, what we did with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So then, I guess, what would you guys say are your favorite? I mean, there's really only four songs on the self-titled. Yeah. If you don't count the outro. I'm not counting the outro because there's barely anything there. That's basically like. Prom Night Part 2. My f- favorite song. Oh, boy. I want to say it's probably Drama Queen. Hey, Mrs. Drama Queen. That, that's probably my favorite one. Yeah. Although think, Prom Night is good. I do I'm, like Prom I'm torn between I, Drama Queen and Prom Night. I think I go Honestly. Prom Night. I think those are the best two, definitely. By far. Yeah, for sure. Although, like, Antichrist sex porn style. <laughs> that song's just <laughs> it's the dumbest I, thing I remember the first time I heard that song I was like legitimately kind of scared because I was like what the hell is going on the entire time the weirdest thing is like I like hated Eskimo Cowboy right oh yeah I did. Like, I absolutely could not understand why anyone listened to this band and my one friend like played a song but wouldn't tell me who it was and I was like, okay, this is really good. Like, who is this? He's like, it's Eskimo Cowboy. Like, ah, caught you mm, lacking. You got me. So I yep. started listening to them, and then 
I listened to everything on repeat, never got to the EP until maybe a year into listening to them. Because I figured, oh, it's going to be like every other EP. It's going to be horrible. It's yeah. Be just, you know, whatever. And no, it's, it is memorable. Oh, yeah. I, I think someone tried to show me back when I was in seventh grade. Uh, they tried to show me, is anyone up? And I was like, I was listening to it. I was like, hell no. I was like, I'm not doing this. Like, I'd, I think two or three years later, I came back to just, I think it was We Are The Mess. And I was like, okay, maybe I can get into this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, seventh grade year was prime time for that, so. I think seventh grade me, I was listening to stuff like, or no, that was ninth, well, maybe eighth grade, I was listening to stuff like Hollywood Undead. So oh, yeah, so was I. We're in the same like position but like musically it was different oh yeah very i forget how young you are <laughs> i'm younger than he is i think no you're not yeah i am i'm 19 <laughs> how old are you i'm turning 22 in november oh yeah i'm 19 i dude i don't know why i was thinking you were 23 a lot of people think i'm way older than i am well nobody likes you when you're 23 <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> I did not appreciate the reference. That's what I was listening to in seventh grade. <laughs> See, that I was, was still, new. I was big in like Avenged Sevenfold and yeah. Slipknot was on seventh grade. That oh. was that was that was a big one. Say, yeah, that, like that's Avenged when City Sevenfold. of Evil came out when I was in seventh grade. Jeez. Oh Jesus, man! No, I, wait, yeah, I think so. Around that time, I got into Avenged shortly after Nightmare came out. <laughs> That's way far down the line. So that would have been like ten or eleven. Oh yeah, I, I was like when they dropped "Backcountry" as the lead single for "City of Evil." No, that was what they led with, man. Yeah, I was, I I liked "Avenge" coming straight out the womb. My brother and my mom were like, "Here, here's metal," and I was like, "All right, cool. <laughs> All right, I can do this." Yeah, I can do this. You know, I wasn't that lucky. I had to stumble upon it from like friends that were like shady drug dealers in the back corner like hey kid you, you like you like jazz? you want some gent <laughs> <laughs> you want gent uh what, what's a gent yeah what what's some august a burns red that's not <laughs> gent <laughs> well i mean okay um i guess going to bury me in vegas like mm. yeah, this is a little bit better from the it's a, a little bit more oh, polished yeah. of the self-titled like that's oh, yeah. really it. Lyrically, it's still just exactly the same. same. Exactly the same. Um, arguable, like pedophilia stuff in there. Uh, arguable. I mean, yeah. With um, what is it? Wonderbra Boulevard. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, like when you read it, it's like I don't know if you intended it for um, her kid to be watching you too, but like. Yeah, you you look at some of their lyrics, and I think that's like, you is and that I the had translation? talked about. Yeah, it. I don't maybe. know. Well, you I and I had a. Uh, we were talking about how they changed a few lyrics from. For twenty twenty. The EP, yeah, and yeah. then to twenty twenty, and I I mm. tried to find the lyrics online, and I couldn't even like find no. the new versions of them. The, They're um, not even out yet. The lyrics that someone put up on Lyric Genius. They're not they right. Just copied the original one. <laughs> like, no, guys, they changed it. <laughs> they, they didn't. They do not say that anymore. <laughs> No, and it's like, it's cool that they changed it, but at the same time, it's like, oh, wait, what did you change it to? What is it? None of us have physicals, because <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't buy the CD. I think yeah, the CD's out yet, is it? Yeah, people have yeah, the it CD. Is. The okay. vinyl aren't out. I know, I got two copies All coming. All the hoops that I have to jump through for their vinyl. I, th- I think I have, I think I got every pressing. I'm pretty sure I managed to. Did you get, you got the Australian New Zealand yep, one, right? I got the Australian one. I got two out of three, and that's, I think I'm good there. Yeah, because you didn't get the half and half. No, I was going to. The half I had to get was... ready for the I'm match. upset that they did half red or like half orangey red, half blue, and not half pink, half blue. But yeah, half pink, half blue would have been cool. Would have been really I mean, cool. Look, it, it, I'm sure happen. they're going to look nice, though. Yeah. Um, so, John. Yes. This is a, because, like, let's be real. When you think of, like, transcourt or, like, electronic metalcore, do you immediately think of they would put Breeze in it? No. No. Like, this is the weirdest band to me to have, like, Breeze or, like, Pig Squeals and stuff like that in it. 
It's the fact that they're still doing it too. Okay. Yeah, and not just on the re-recordings. Like they did it at the end of Hypa Hypa and I MC love Thunder every too. single scream at the MC end Thunder of Hypa too. Hypa. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it goes through every single scream you could possibly do. And he pulled it off live too, and they did that. Uh, yeah, the, Kevin is. I don't know if so Kevin's underrated as a vocalist. In oh yeah, well because he was overshadowed too with right. sushi being there as well. The thing is, like with Kevin, it's like I always heard like he did the majority of the unclean stuff. Sushi did singing and some of the yelling, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. But like live, it almost seemed like Kevin was just there for background stuff. Yeah, he he just did a lot of the synth live. Right, which was weird because it's like if you record it on the album, do it live. But yeah, right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we need to talk about "Is Anyone Up." That's actually my probably my favorite song off of it. I, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I I don't know. It's it's a really close call between that and Five Dollar Bitch Core. I think I really like that song, <laughs> dude. You know, reading the name is one thing. Hearing them said back to you is another. <laughs> it's a whole other, whole other thing. <laughs> uh, like, is anyone up or like Transylvanian Cunt Hunger is like... Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's see, like, hearing that, like, saying it, you're like, ah, oh, it's weird, but hearing someone else say it... <laughs> uh, uh, that, that might be one of my least favorite songs, actually. I, I either either that I or think, I don't know. It's just the intro for it for me, like the whole like almost like gothic kind of yeah, like very um. I don't want to say Dracula because like that's Transylvania. Kind of, yeah, but, but that's kind of what it feels like. Right. I think the only song I really don't like on here is either Legendary Sleeping Assault or Snow Covered Polaroids. Actually, yeah, I was going to say those two are probably also. Like they're the not bad. Are, no, they're they're not bad. It's just, but compared to the rest of that album, right, they're like very overshined. I will say, like looking at um, "Light the Skyline," I could not tell you what that sounded like. No, like I probably know it really well, but yeah, I don't. Know. It, I will say it upsets me that um, the really catchy like synth intro for "Is Anyone Up" is a separate track on here. Yeah, on Spotify. Yeah, as the interlude. Interstate. Yeah, even yeah, it's like, the same thing on Apple TV. Music. I hate you. Why? Wait, did you say it's the same on Apple Music or it's a single track on Apple Music? No, it's the same thing as Spotify. Okay. I was about to say. It, what, I think it actually was. They had a version where it was both songs and it was just one yeah. entire thing. That's the I'm, one they used for, for the reason. music video. Yeah, whatever the combined one is. But on I don't know. The somebody video, somebody thought to split it. I mean, I get it, but it yeah, yeah no, it's that it was sushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to turn into rehab. Oh, I got, I got, I, I, I got a few words. To get there. I got okay. a few words. I, dude, I, I have some angst for that album <laughs> because, mm, all right, um, I don't trust. We went over Wonder Bra Boulevard with like the pedophilia stuff that might be there, maybe not. Maybe I don't not. know. I think it's just broken translation, maybe. I'm hoping that's what it I, is. I'm hoping, but see, that would make sense if they did it in German and then you translate it to English. Yeah, they write it in English. Yeah, they do everything in English, which so makes I... me think like they knew what they were saying. And either like... that or it, it was, you know, how eight years ago. So maybe their English wasn't great at the time but then like what else could you take it as yeah that that's the other thing you know, is what else could even, it be like that's the thing it's like there's no other weird thing like it's not like oh your kids in the car but we're you know it's like no you you explicitly said he's right there yeah it it, it, I, don't, it I think it'd be interesting to try to like talk to Kevin about some of the older music at some point. I, I would love to. Uh, that that's if I could interview him for like five minutes, it would just be like, look, we don't need to talk about everything. I just want to talk about the EP. Maybe best day for that weird rap verse that we'll get to. <laughs> and oh. then some of the 
stuff on Bury Me in Vegas. Yeah. That they also named the album for no reason. Yeah, that, that like, it I also... Mean, I get it. Like, it fits the theme of partying, but... Yeah. You, you're from Germany. I mean, I I, I'd hope they at least had been to Vegas by that point. No, they haven't. Oh, Jesus. So when they did the We Are The Mess tour with Deuce, they did a U.S. vlog, like, for maybe a few episodes. Mm -hmm. And they were in Vegas, and they all got, like, a group picture outside of the Vegas sign. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this is our first time to Vegas. Like, we just randomly <laughs> named the album Bury Me In Vegas. It's like, guys, stop having dumb strokes of genius. <laughs> it's like, you can't pick a catchy band name. You can't do a stupid album name, and you can't, like, jokingly form a band and have a beat. Well, I guess you can. I mean, I guess they did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, hearing, seeing some of the old shows that they did... They did not care about appearance. No, yeah. I, I've watched a few of their older live videos. I forget what video it is, but it's the video of Sushi in the T-Rex costume climbing the scaffolding on the, on the stage. And I just... I love it. That, the Hello Kitty <laughs> guitar. And then... I think it's their bassist that always wears like the panda onesie. Yeah, I they, think it was him. Because he did that all the way up through Crystals. Yeah, he, I was going to say, there's, I think there's a music video in Crystals where he still has it on. And it's like, okay, dude. <laughs> my, my friend is a it Hello fits Kitty the guitar. Aesthetic, but... Oh, yeah, it definitely fits it. Oh. I guess it's also worth noting that this is the last album with their original drummer. Oh, yeah. Which is weird because, like, looking at their lineup, it's been the same guys except for the drummer and now Sushi. Yeah. You know? It, it, it's amazing how steady they've been able to stay. Considering as far as members like it's go. not like a parody band, but like um, like a less serious band. Yeah, fun band. A yeah, fun band. Fun yeah, band. like they're a fun band. Like Tell having main slots at like Rock <laughs> In and Rock and Ring and stuff like that. So I, I, I yeah, know. just never really made it here until just recently. Right. Oh, we didn't talk about Muffin Pupper Girk. See, I want to know if that song is actually about like a dead hamster or if it was just the music video. Um, it is about the hamster. Oh, it's hell the yes. Last, the last verse um, where not like Sushi's crying, but like the whole like, I miss you. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's, that pretty, part, it's yeah. pretty much like, okay, we can say it's about the hamster. Yeah. But I I remember like deep diving, like, what, what is Muffin Pupper Girk? And yeah. I finally found someone that was like, um, it's just like a weird joke on a commercial that was a stupid commercial in Germany. And they were like, all right, we'll use that as a name. Like, I don't even <laughs> this will work. <laughs> I don't even think it's the name of the company. I think it was like the punchline in the commercial or whatever. Muffin purple. I don't, dude, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I could Maybe be wrong. The Germans because, like, for that. Yeah. Again, like, translating a lot of the stuff over to find out like what's the history and stuff is kind of weird but you ever met german people sometimes they're kind of weird yeah i was my, gonna my... say jamie but she's not german technically she just lives in germany i don't know her whole story but uh she's yeah. on an air force base i know she was on the base but yeah i didn't know if she yeah i'm pretty sure andrew what Jamie's from the U.S., right? Yeah, I don't know where she hasn't told me, but uh, okay. I know she's from the U.S. That. Okay, that's what I thought. Like I thought she was in the U.S. and then moved to the Air Force Base. Uh, we had a German intern at my my job, and it was very strange. Actually, I had um, it's not German, but they were Austrian. They're just a strange German exchange student. I they yeah, to become governors of California. It, yeah, it was rough. She didn't know what a bush was. What? Like, she didn't, like, she knew what, like, a bush was, but she didn't know that the U.S. word for it was bush. Oh. <laughs> and so she saw it in a book. She's like, what is that? And I pointed outside. I'm like, it's the round leafy thing. <laughs> bush. <laughs> the, the German guy that came and interned for me, he had caught a cold when he got here. So my boss recommended go get some NyQuil. 
The dude <laughs> couldn't feel his face for four days. How much did he take? He took the recommended amount, but he's not used to American medicine. I was going to say American medicine probably kicked his ass. He, he came into work and he was, he was like, I haven't been able to feel my face since Friday night. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just numb, man. It's, it doesn't feel right. He doesn't is this, handle is it. Is this how I get rid of it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it's supposed to do. And I'm going. That barely affects me. Oh goodness! I gotta take twice the recommended amount, man. <laughs> All right. Well, then I guess let's go to. I'm gonna call this one my favorite. I'm besides I, the new EP. I don't know. I want to call it my favorite. Like I want to say we are the. Then best just favorite. call it your favorite. You can do but that. Crystals just... exist. <laughs> Yeah, crystal existing crystals, makes me question that. That's, that's a close second for me. Crystals has like some really heavy songs like Pitch Blaze and Crystals, right? Yeah. I feel like We Are the Mess has like Blood Red Lips, Voodoo Circus. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think... Mm, I think We Are the Mess, I'll, I'll say, because it, it has Party at the Horror House and that... That's th- it still has the fun from the first two releases. It does. It, it has the fun, series. but it's a more mature sound. A little less electronic? A little less, yeah. Not, like they, not a whole lot, but... Like, instead of saying, here's, like, this really fun electronic intro, a full, like, electronic feel to the song, and then, like, a dubstep-infused breakdown. It's more so just, here's a little bit of electronics for the breakdown, and every couple songs will put, like, an intro. There's there's a few songs off of We Are the Mess that I I don't really know that well. Like I think Broadway's gonna kill us. I've maybe listened to like once or twice. Honestly, it's a good song. I yeah, it, <laughs> I don't it, I, it's a solid one. And then Never Let You Know I've listened to not a whole lot. I think my favorite is probably I gotta say it's either Jagger Swagger. Or I really like Voodoo Circus. That's I'm an Voodoo idiot. Circus is up there. What, dude? I've been. I always thought it was Jagger Swagger. <laughs> no, because like, I mean, I, it, it might I be. I thought it was like a stupid German thing. That's like, oh, we're gonna try to make it rhyme. Yeah, you know, but it 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 might be without the umlau over the a. It might actually be Jagger Swagger. That's what I'm thinking. Like, it doesn't yeah. have the. Um, what are they called? The accent symbol thing? Umlau. Yeah. I took German for like three years, so I know. See, I took bit. French for five. Four? Oh. Four or five. Also, oh, five. in German, it wouldn't have a hard J. Yeah, that's that's why I was thinking that. Yeah. Okay, look, I, I'm admitting that I'm wrong. I've been mispronouncing it for five, <laughs> four years. I'll admit that. <laughs> I am there, There's a chance. It. Yeah, Mary, I just yeah. figured they were the type of band that's like would try to make it like that. Yeah, I mean it could be, but if you're going straight up Germany, they really don't have a J sound. Right. Yeah. Very rarely. Then have I been mispronouncing hashtag Elk Transformer? I think that one's still. I don't know that one. Or is isn't or is it Elch Transform? Like I I don't know. If, if it was German, I think it'd be Elk. Elk Transformer. Because of how the ch works, but right, is that the is that the one where it's just them prank the calling? <laughs> yep, in New York. <laughs> yeah, it is. I remember my friend showed me that. I'm like, they really made this a song. Yeah, this or is a track. Like, this is their interlude for the album. <laughs> yeah, it is. Not yeah, that it's, yeah, it is. The moose transformer from now on. Smack dab in the middle. You say moose transformer? That's what it means. Oh, does it really? Yeah. <laughs> does well, make any wait, sense? does transformer translate to anything? No, that's a, that's an English word. That's yeah. why. Okay, I'm just making sure. Moose transformer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John, how how did you how did you feel about that? What? Like, because I know that you weren't expecting to hear a pizza prank call. Uh, <laughs> I skipped it after the first time every time. Are you serious? There, there's yeah. a few times I actually like listen to it because it mean, just makes me I've, laugh I've my ass off. More of the time I skip it, but if I'm doing something, I would just let it play because it's well yeah. like a minute and a half. Yeah, uh, I, I don't get the joke. The fact that because they call it the same place twice, right? 
It's just him yelling at him, and I love it. <laughs> Not that she yells back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the first time, she's like, really? You're doing this? And then the second time, she's like, okay, I'll go uh, in. Blah, 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 blah. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, right. No one else is ordering pizza except these guys from Germany, I guess. Um, I will say um, CS, TRP, and RXL. They're solid opening and closing songs. Is I I don't think I've ever listened to RXL either, to be honest. Maybe a few times. I think it's, if I'm right, I mean, I'm also in the same boat of like, I've listened to it enough where it's like, I know it. But I think it's just like a piano. <laughs> okay, it's just like some like lo-fi like EDM kind of stuff. But I mean. Yeah, I I do like how they tend to do that with their outro tracks though. Yeah. Like how I they say, like, on, uh, crystals, yeah. Having it be like the place they're from, like having it open and close, like, mm -hmm. like it's a nice I, touch. I like it when albums do that. Right. Um. Blood red lips. Maybe the weirdest lyrics. song. Yeah. Oh, lyrically. I, lyrically. I yeah, mm -hmm. it, it very yeah. well could be. I will say I think this is the album that they definitely became more serious with the lyrics. Yeah, because they were there was there was still a lot of joking implied. lyrics, but they and definitely that is just that's. I remember looking at the lyrics for the songs. The song one of the first times I was like, I remember <laughs> I showed my girlfriend the lyrics, and she started reading. She's like, "Oh, it's kind of sweet." And then she got to the um line about like pouring beer down her bra. She's like, "Never mind." <laughs> never, never mind. I'm... And then the part about like a zombie barbie or something like that right yeah <laughs> and then but it's like at the end it's like oh you know real beauty's on the inside it's like you can't give me this whole i got into this fight with a chick slept with her turned out she was a, like an old grandmother but you know <laughs> i love her because like beauty's on the inside and she makes me feel like a man it's like <laughs> it's just so what are you weird, doing man uh <laughs> it's just all over the place and i love it so it, it's they definitely, they were having a fun time with the lyrics, no doubt. Like, I feel like other bands did lyrics similar to this. Like, I feel like One Morning Left kind of did, like, the weird, like, a lot of my spacey bands did the weird sexual lyrics, right? Yeah. But I feel like Eskimo Cowboy is the only one that, like, got away with having, like, decent That's production right. behind it. Yeah. Their production yeah, like, for the I time think, was really good. Right. Like, each time, like, it's gotten better. Yeah, it just Except continues. rehab. No, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to it. We, but... we will get to it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have fun. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is just one solid song after the next. Yeah. You know, like, it, we are, like, the self tie or the, um, the title, title track. Yeah, I, I can think of words. I mean, that's probably one of my favorite songs. I was not expecting the Deuce feature the first time I listened to it. I was sitting there and I was like, is that right. fucking, I was like, is that Deuce? Because on every single thing that I've listened to it, it's never said, hey, it features Deuce. Yeah. And whenever, because I think that's one of the ones my friends showed me. I'm like, wait, Deuce does features? <laughs> what? And I'm like, oh, wait, this would have been around like shortly after... He was kicked out from Hollywood and Dead, so he was probably trying to do something. Oh, yeah. He was trying to get some money. But this is also around the time he did his debut solo album, which is honestly... Not bad. Not the lyrics are... Bad. The lyrics are... Deucey. <laughs> the fairy deuce. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if it's a time period, I think, because it was, what, 2010-ish? 2009? Yeah, I think it was around, around there. there. I remember listening to that in middle school. <laughs> I remember, I think I listened to Nine Lives. Yeah. Like the title song. And then, oh, uh, there was whatever the um, Deuce song that was literally a ripoff of Dead and Ditches. That was oh. the same beat, but like it was all like his friends like trashing on Hollywood and Dead. I can't remember exactly what, oh, wait. what the I title have it on is. My phone still, I think. Yeah, oh, I I definitely have it on my Spotify somewhere. 
Because I remember hearing that. I'm like, you... Let her in. Uh, when we ride. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's just like, okay, you ripped off your old band's song, but okay. <laughs> it's an accomplishment, I guess. Do they still have that beef or no? Oh, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. 100. That's I'm sure they don't talk about it, but... Yeah. I mean, they're, I think what Johnny was like, yeah, we're done talking about it. Like, whatever. So, I mean. Because I know some people, like Craig and Ronnie, got back. Right. Craig and Ronnie are chill. Um, I think Vince and Frankie are kind yeah, of. Yeah, they said they're cool. Yeah. Vince from Casey. Right? Yeah, yeah that's a. Um, you weren't around for that. I know you were around for that beef. No, I was. No, <laughs> I wasn't around for the Ronnie or Craig stuff either because I got into both of them. Yeah, whenever I was Ungrateful young. dropped as an album. Oh my! God. I'm a youngin. I got into. I'm too oh. damn old. He's fine. Because I, I remember fighting with people over Team Ronnie or Team. Uh, oh boy, Greg. What were Greg you back then? Back in the day, I was always Greg. Ronnie. Yeah, I probably would have been too. <laughs> I mean, I was excited for Craig to come in the band, but then this Warriors Ours came out, and it was not what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I don't, mm. Besides the song, this Warriors Ours, I don't really like the rest of that album. <laughs> I enjoyed 10 Miles. I love that album. I enjoyed that album more than the self titled. Yeah. This Warriors Ours is one of my favorites. Well. When we get to the Eskimo, or Eskimo, when we get to the Escape the Fate episode, <laughs> we already did. Me and Richard did a long time ago. Look, I know, and I'm upset that I didn't get to talk about Ungrateful because you two pretty much both unanimously hated that album. Yeah, and I that is my like peak favorite Escape the Fate album. And I I remember sitting in bed listening to that episode at like three in the morning, hearing you two like just crap all over Ungrateful. <laughs> Okay. All right, this hurts. This is the guy that I want to do the podcast with. <laughs> Fine. This is this and is then we came on and we did Ice Nine Kills for two and a half hours. He's got a lot to say, man. Josiah we could have we could have kept going. We could have, but it was I, like twelve thirty. <laughs> here's the thing: I was so prepared for that episode because I didn't know what to expect. Right? Yeah. Because I never did a podcast, and that was our first one with more than one guest yeah that, I, I had a note sheet typed out that was like <laughs> um, every album like certain things i wanted to mention per album and i had it pulled up while we were going through it that's what i was trying to do but it just got so i think i didn't want to do that that's what it i wanted to do too but right <clears throat> like i think stage fright kicked in <laughs> like yeah, awkward. I, I don't want to say i want to revisit the ice on kills episode one day we probably are going to revisit Ice Nine Kills when the new album comes out. And we'll probably revisit Escape the Fate when their new album comes out. That's true. But I'm just patiently waiting for Miss Mad to release music after three years, three and a I half mean, years. <laughs> I'm still waiting for a day to remember's next album to come out. Yeah. It doesn't seem I am too, at but all. I don't have high hopes, to be honest. Again, I want if to, it's but like resentment, I'll be fine. But Mind like Reader came out after that, and then Mind Reader crushed my happiness. I don't mind Mind Reader, but I, I hate the Degen- Degenerates. Though I enjoyed Degenerates. That so song much. can go suck it because that song is just bad. It was good live, I will say. They made it good live, but it's not good recorded. I don't know. I'll, we'll see. All I know is I'm fine with putting that variant collection on hold right now. Good. Ooh. Ooh. Until Are you they start dropping selling it. I'm only selling it for one thing only. Actually, I always said I will sell the self-titled EP if the Ice Nine Kills demos came up. Oh, wow. I will only sell the vinyl if I'm getting engaged. That's it. <laughs> if I have no other way to get the money for a ring, that's, that's the only way. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Might not need to. Hopefully not. So probably when they drop a, another rehab album. Anyway. Hey, don't. I think yeah. I think they know how much people dislike the album. <laughs> they they barely. Oh. Well, dislike we'll say. 
They didn't even tour it that much. Yeah, I think they probably did. Well, I mean, COVID also got in the way. Yeah. They would have been touring it this year. But they came out with this e- the, the new EP, and I think that's what we need to keep doing. Oh, yeah. You need to keep it I have high hopes for the album next year. Yeah. I, Firm is coming out next year? Or? I, they yeah, said they wanted to. They were actually they, going to do a full length this year. They couldn't wait. But COVID happened. Sushi left the band. <laughs> and then they got Nico and they're like, no, we're too excited. We're putting some of the songs out. Because Hypa Hypa, Hate Love, and I think MC Thunder 2 were all supposed to be on the full length. But they were like, no, we have enough yeah, songs. Yeah, they were all like fully written. I think he said they had like six or seven songs finished. Yeah. and But they yeah. just did not want to wait to release any new stuff. So. I think they made a good move though, because oh yeah, it definitely got now. It's getting a lot of more, a lot more people into them, especially in America. Right. So if I don't know, this might the next album coming out might be the album to get them back here. I I would I would hope so. If they continue on the path that they are doing right now, for sure. Yeah. If they keep mixing that sort of like hate love, sort of like I think poppy, you know sort of heavier like towards the end especially sound and then mix yeah. that with the sound of hypa hypa and they just release an album full of that they'll be solid yeah. if they can Honestly, still perfectly combine the serious and the joking side of their they band do that i could see them doing maybe like another crystals kind of album i would hope so like i think that's going to be the sound they end up settling with mm-hmm. at least for the next one but yeah i guess speaking huh. of that do you guys want to get into Crystals? Weirdest album cover. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting album cover. They still have the bunny head. Yeah. And I always jokingly said I wanted to buy it, but... <laughs> That'd be an inter- interesting piece of merch to have. It would be one of those things, it's like, why do you have a bunny head? It's like, it's the Eskimo Cowboy bunny head. What don't you understand? <laughs> it's the album cover prop. <laughs> it's like, no, we can't sell you the bunny head, but we can sell you the bathtub. Yeah, right. You, you can't, you can have the bathtub water in the bathtub, but not the bunny head. <laughs> um, is, that um, a, is that a nice nine kills phone case? Yeah, I, <laughs> I had, God, I had God, one made. God damn it, Bryce. <laughs> no, because it's one of things, like, I got my phone and I was like, I don't want a standard H- black case with it. And I was yeah. like, I wonder if I can find a website that will make like a custom one. Oh yeah. So I had, and it was like, oh hey, you can upload whatever image. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll put it up there. Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like I don't count it as merch, but. Yeah. Wasn't that a whole discussion on your collectors group? <laughs> talk about I want. I'm gonna bring that back up because that was another fun time. <laughs> I never like to get involved. I just like reading through all that shit. I didn't. I didn't I get involved, but completely, which is fun because like I'll throw like a one-off comment. I'm like, well, you know what? You maybe you shouldn't do this. No one replies to it. No one says anything. And I like to think they're all just like, Bryce is. Bryce is commenting. Oh no. <laughs> like, Bryce is saying something like controversial. He doesn't like this member of Mac. Oh no! <laughs> I, I thought Bryce liked everyone. Yeah, right. No, the, the amount of Mac members that have been going down lately too. Oh, oh god! Right, it's dropping like flies. To, dude, I'm waiting for it to be me. <laughs> well, <laughs> someone, someone finds one thing you said six years ago, and you're just done for. Dude, I don't even know if there is anything that you can. If pull. if somehow my PlayStation parties got leaked from like six years ago, <laughs> I'd be done for. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I have anything. Like, I mean, maybe some out of context. Horribly, stuff. out of context stuff. Maybe, but not, not, nothing. I think it would get me stuff like people would judge me on, but oh, yeah. it would be like, no, you're canceled, dude. Yeah, what the hell, Bryce? <laughs> How could you do this? How could you do this, man? <laughs> Um, but yeah, crystals. It. 
I will say for the longest time, I never knew the baby was a cover. It's a cover? It's a cover of NSYNC. What? The chorus is... Oh, uh, look whose ears perked up. Yep. <laughs> now, the verses... I, Andrew can correct me on this if I'm wrong, because I haven't listened to the full original one. The verses are different, but the chorus is, I think, the part of it that's the cover, technically, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, I, I had no idea. Go listen to... Uh, it's what? Tearing Up My Heart by... Yep. Yeah. It's man, that's it's a revelation weird. for me because I heard it and I'm like, who's covering Eskimo Cowboy in the U.S.? <laughs> and I was like, wait, that's insane. Like, oh, shit. there's this whole like other layer thing. It's, let's be, it's weird to put a cover as the second song of an album, especially not even covered technically the entire song and just the chorus. I mean, it's a really good chorus. Oh, it is a really good chorus. There's no doubt about that. It's because it was written by somebody who's really good at writing pop music. Yeah, <laughs> yep. really good at writing pop music and owning young boys, but whatever. <laughs> There's a little documentary on that, dude. Did, are, did you watch it on the... Um, what channel was it? Because they recently aired it because it was the guy that owned NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. Was it Vice? Mm, I don't think it was Vice. I don't remember that. I don't know. But, but yeah, that was a fun documentary. I was like, yeah. they don't teach me that in college. I'm going to I, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, but it was one of those things. It's like, shouldn't we talk about the whole um, scam of why are people tagging me in posts? Uh-oh, um, did the demos cop show up? <laughs> no, it's the um, greeting card that I, sell, that I sold someone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, how do you guys feel about Ritual being the... Um, interlude song for this one. Oh, Ritual? Yeah. I like how it leads into Monster. Because Monster is, I think, one of my favorite songs on the album. Other than maybe Pitch Please, because at the time that I had discovered this album specifically, I was really into guitar. And that song is so easy on the guitar. <laughs> so I was just like, this song slaps. <laughs> oh, cool. He can play Wonderwall. I can play... I always almost like reverse I, I, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, can pay, I can play Pitch Please. I think one of my friends, I was trying to, I was like, hey, man, you know who Eskimo Cowboy is? He was like, no, I don't. I was like, I, I was like, check out some off Crystals. I was like, it's my favorite album. First song he listens to is Too Fat, Too Furious. And then he looked at the lyrics. He's like, I, I don't think I like it. I was like, I don't blame you. <laughs> I, Josiah, who's the other guy who normally does this with us, absolutely did not like Hypa Hypa. Did not <sighs> like, he actually didn't want to do this episode because he hates the lyrics. <laughs> I, I get it. It's, I get it. It's I get it. I did show him Too Fat, Too Furious, and he loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a weird song. Like, oh, it's because a weird song. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it's like, for me, it's like, it's fun. Like, same, same thing with FDMDH. That song is just, it's so weird. I have never been able to successfully translate that, and I hate it. I, I actually talked to my German teacher, and she had translated a bit of it for me. I, I it was a mistake, but she did. See, we had a German teacher in my high school that was like, he would do whatever, right? Yeah. He wanted to go to him after class. He was like, hey, teach me how to swear in German. He, he would. So oh, yeah. Part of me wants to send it to him because like, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I'm like, hey, can you translate What does this say? <laughs> what, what is he saying? He's giving me some weird... Weird. Yeah, it, it was sort of this uh, back with uh, We Are the Mess at the end when they have that German, the other German guy come on. Yeah. I was reading up some of the at the lyrics of that and I was reading it. I was like, I know some of these words and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> and then as my German teacher, she looked at me and she's like, oh, no. I was like, uh. <laughs> Is this a mistake? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm asking you to translate it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it says. Although, if you know what it says, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe you're the one I should worry about. But Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, Shiza. Oh, Shiza. I think the only song 
No, I don't know. The only song I really don't care about is, I think, Walk on the Thin Line. See, I'm trying to remember which one that is. Hold on. I don't. I just remember him screaming the um line walk. Oh, it's that one. Yeah. I like the chorus, right. personally, but I, like the rest of the song is, I think, pretty lackluster. Um, I will say their most perfect intro for anything is Crystals. Like, that that song just kicks in, and it's... Oh, yeah, that... that yeah. I, I remember hearing that song, and I, the intro was happening. I was like, okay, this is going to be cool. And then it happened, I was like, oh, oh, God. I was like, this this song ain't fucking around with me. <laughs> John, your your thoughts on crystals? It's good. It'd be my second favorite after Mess, though. Fine, it's a fine album. Whatever. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about it. The album's okay. It, yeah. They brought back the electronic intros. Oh yeah. Or maybe not electronic, but like the um more synthy kind yeah. of stuff and like sampling stuff. stuff. I just. I personally don't think there's a bad song on the album, and I think that's why it's my favorite. Like, I could just keep listening to the album straight song, through. Except for Ritual. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't yeah. care about but if we're counting that as part of Monster, then yeah, there's not a bad song. I mean, at the same time, though, there's also those weird interlude tracks on, like, every album they have. So at the same time... Are they interlude on the scene? What? Wait. I don't think they do. Yeah, they Wait, do. X. X. Yep. So they have been doing it pretty much every album. Except for MMX or 2020, or whatever you want to call it. Don't call yeah. it MMXX. MMX. Just say it's 2020. Yeah, well, I wouldn't consider it an interlude, but I guess in rehab they sort of did the same thing with the intro track. I don't want to talk about the intro track for rehab. <laughs> it's, it's, I, it's so that stupid. <laughs> I, you know what? Do you want to go out of order and go to rehab? <laughs> I mean, it, I think it's up to them if they just want to get the negativity of it out of the way. No, we'll get there. We have to go to scene next. Yeah. When things start getting a little weird. Yeah. Okay. The scene, I will say, is probably their most experimental. Oh, by yeah. far. Probably their softest if you count instrumentally. Yeah, instrumentally, it's a lot of just it's open really note. Instrumentally is heavy. Oh, yeah. But the scene has more like acoustics and stuff like that to it but mm-hmm. if this isn't an album to vibe to i don't know what is yeah it's it i i really like what they did at the ending of vip how they have the whole like the just the snapping with the whistle it's honestly this i wasn't expecting it i will say this is an album that i always think i hate more than i do and I listen to it, I'm like, no, it's a near perfect album. Yeah, it's really not as bad as I like want it to be for some reason. Like I think Nightlife Nightlife might be my least favorite. Yeah. I I would yeah, I don't know. It's Nightlife or I love Francis. Maybe Shallows. See, I I always think Shallows is a lot softer than it actually is. Yeah, and then you listen and you're like, okay, well, oh, maybe not. Is it's like I would say that's probably in the top four heavy songs of the album. Yeah. Because I would say like Shallows, The Devil Within the Scene, and Back in the Biz. Back in the Biz. <laughs> that I I will say every time I listen to the album, I always think the scene is the intro track. Yeah. It never is. And when Back in the Biz starts, I'm like, oh wait. But it's like, you know, it fits because it's like, hey, we're back and we're... Oh, yeah. That was like, li- that was the purpose of that song. Right. And it's like, I, you know what? You picked a weird one to do. Like, I would say that's the song that should have been, like, on 2020. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's like, hey. We're uh, back. Ignore the last one. <laughs> ignore that last album we just made. Because there wasn't that big of a gap between... Yeah, no, it was a two-year gap, so... Yeah, I yeah say, it, it, it's interesting. That, that, it's a crime that it's not pressed on vinyl. That's all I'll say. What, uh, what album? Crystals. Like, give me an ultra. Oh, yeah, that's vinyl. right. <laughs> okay. I guess also, Bury Me in them. Vegas. That pisses me off, too. Bury Me in Vegas, Redfield said they might press. <sighs> because remember that comment? They were like, would you oh, get yeah, the... want it to be pressed? And it's like, 
yeah, yeah. please <laughs> do it <laughs> but like no, i if i'm right air force one records owns the rights to crystals which really awesome. i thought it was still sentry i think no oh, i know it is air force one yep yeah go ahead because I was always told that was like a weird transitioning point where it's like they were on Air Force, but they were also on Century Media. But because of some issues with that, they never got a Japanese press of the album. Because this is the only one, or Crystals was the only one never released in Japan. Oh, interesting. Because I spent like a month looking for like a Japanese CD of it. And my friend was like, yeah, it was never released there. Like, oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's, I think... It says Air Force One and Universal. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, I... Is that... What's the deal with that label? Are they just not... They have no interest in pressing it, or do they just not do it? I think it's that. It's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. I think if they saw how much people... would, I don't even think Air Force One is a big label. Probably. They might not even have the money to press it. Which, at that point, you should... They should just say, "Hey, we'll sell you the pressing rights to the band." Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm sure. Uh, I SMO would do it if they had the rights. If I had the money, I would probably make like an out of two bootleg of it and like send you one. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I, I do it. Hey man, we have this now. <laughs> just play a prank on Mac. It's official. Guys, I know, look you what guys I have. Doing? Everyone losing their absolute. <laughs> oh yeah, if if I saw that. I would lose my shit immediately. I'd lose my mind if I saw that and didn't know it wasn't legit. <laughs> like, if I made, like, I guess I would have to get, like, some kind of artwork for the center label. In the yeah. Spine. You could just use the CD artwork, what they have in the booklet. Yeah, I could. Mm. Yeah, Universal owns the rights to it. Yeah, that's not going to happen, probably. <laughs> It could happen. It's just that's going to be one hell of a license licensing fee. Oh yeah, for Universal, definitely. Where the mess needs a repress, though. Yeah, I mean, I found one for five hundred dollars, but do I have five hundred dollars to spend I on spent, that? No. I spent two hundred on my pink splatter one, and a month later, one came up for one ten. I think there there is one on that German eBay you talked to me about. It was like a hundred bucks. And I yeah, was like, that, it's worth it all day. At, at the time, I couldn't do it, but I kind of want to see if I can go back and find I think it again. It's still up. I'd have to look because I, I would hope it is. I think I spent about 250 on my Weird of the Mess test press. Yeah, but I didn't know you had a test of it. What? Yeah. The only one in public. Oh. Uh, Redfield, I think it was like around Christmas or whatever. Redfield put that up. And like two other ones for I think forty eight hours, and they said if it doesn't sell, then whatever. Which would be crazy if it didn't. It didn't sell for about a day, wow. and I was like, because I was trying to get the funds for it. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm selling whatever right now. Yeah. And I got it, and afterwards I'm like, am I gonna regret this? <laughs> because at the time I'm like, I don't really know if I care about Esmo Cowboy that much. But then I got it, and I just had a um a black and white alt cover printed up for it. I'm like, nah, it, it's worth it. It's, yeah, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. And I actually emailed the owner. I'm like, hey, I'm the guy that bought the We Are The Mess test press. He's like, oh, hey, how are you? You know, we were talking. I'm like, what do I have to do to get um, test presses of 2020 and the self-titled EP? He's like, we have them. He's like, but I can't give those out right now. Right now. I'm like, like, that's fair. Because like, the album's not even out yet. Yeah, the, the so vinyl like, itself it. isn't out. So, I mean, it makes I like, sense. I get it. But I was like, hey, if you ever decide that, oh, hey, I want $300. <laughs> yeah, right. Let me know. Yeah, it's 300 bucks. <laughs> um, I guess going back to the scene, it's like we got really sidetracked there. It has MC Thunder. Yeah, it... The, Arguably their most popular song, other than Hypa Hyper right now. Right. But before 2020, it would have been their Yeah, definitely song. was their biggest song. For good reason, too. It, it is a super catchy song. It, my mom loves that song. Your mom loves it? <laughs> my mom doesn't like that song, Cowboy. But as soon as I put like the intro like melody on, she's immediately singing it. Oh, yeah. And it's like, boom. My, 
it's it's sort of similar to my mom. She doesn't really like, I guess, heavier music, like metalcore style sort of heavy music. But the second like Mr. Highway comes on by Data, remember, she is right. going for it. <laughs> she loves that um, song. I was going to say, I also, my mom absolutely loves the Ice Nine Kills Adele cover. I'm sure my mom would like that one too. <laughs> I think when we did the Ice Nine Kills podcast, I think we all said like our moms like the Adele cover, I think, right? I didn't oh, show my mother that, so. What did you show your mom then? Cannibal Corpse. Oh, God. My mom would be like, Thackeray. She loves it. She made me buy her a shirt, too. <laughs> yeah, but your mom also called on the podcast to chew you out. Oh. Yeah, that's right. A grown man with rogue. kids getting you out. God damn. That'll probably be me. Uh, that, that my mom showed me Popular Monster a while back, and I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. This <laughs> song's like five months <clears throat> old, but whatever. <laughs> kind of behind the times, but... Yeah, get with it, Mom. It already made waves in the scene. It, it's it technically made... still. Yeah, it's, it's still, still, it's still number, number one. one. Yep. I think that's why he's not releasing anything else yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, he's he might be. probably fine. That and he streams a lot on Twitch, too. And I think the fact he streams that, a lot on Twitch. I think the fact that, that though. Derek had died too probably put a put a little bit of halt to him writing as well. Yeah, because the last thing they put out was Popular Monster that was original, and then they put that demo B side kind of thing from. I think it was. It was what Gravity? I think it was called or something from Coming Home. Yeah, it was off of Coming Home. It was a good song, but. Yeah. That's the, the the drug in me and is reimagined. That that I like. Derek. What? Was that after Derek passed away? I think that was after. I believe Derek. so. I could be because that kind of all. It was either right before or right after. Uh, let's I, see. No, I was in school for it before. Oh no, it was in February. He died in April. Yeah. Or May or something okay. like that. Yeah. So that was. Before. I was gonna say. I thought I remember him in the video. That was in February. Yeah, because I was sitting in um, accounting when my friend sent that to me. And he's like, dude, this song is insane. I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it. So I literally told my professor, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm going to the song right now. <laughs> Take like a five-minute piss. I'll be right back. But, I mean, the Franz feature on the scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. I that That took me off. That was... I was not expecting that for some reason when I first listened to it uh, with the music video. It's one of those things that's like, I never knew how much a Franz feature would fit with Eskimo Cowboy until you hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It worked weirdly well, but at the same time, it was sort of jarring to hear. I was like, Franz? It does out come of out nowhere? of <laughs> But I mean, his, his lyrics on it are actually fine. Yeah. They make They're sense. Okay. Yeah, it's the theme of the scene. Let's be real; the scene is pretty much just a call out to like the scene, right? Like, hey, you're all <laughs> like really nice to each other, but like as soon as you all like aren't around each other, you're like, can you believe like what this dude and this band did? I'm yeah, Lolly that, Mac. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. almost Max theme song in a way. I was gonna say like we should make it its name, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it's yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Rooftop might be one of my favorite songs on here. I, I showed one of my friends who had never heard Eskimo Call by Rooftop, and he was sitting there, like, confused at the start, and then it dropped, and he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> right, because, I mean, it's, again, it's a call-out to every, like, hip-hop rap video mm -hmm. that was coming out at the time. And it's like, yeah, don't they know why you're calling them out, but okay. They were not afraid in 2017, apparently. No, they were just they, they were just that. doing whatever at that point. <laughs> like pretty much, if you go through the album, it's like, okay, we're back. We hate the scene and we hate rap videos. Okay. And then you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna go buy some chicken nuggets in a in a really nice old car, right? For my music video. <laughs> that video. It's a good video. I, I remember hearing, like, watching the behind the scenes. And finding out, like, they were having issues, like, learning that, oh, hey, we have to drive it. Because the band was never there for it. 
Yeah. They sent what the camera crew and the producer and then the guy acting in it was like, okay, we have to do that and uh, find a girl. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, hey, we have to drive on the right side of the road. Oh, wait, how do I do this, man? <laughs> uh, it's such a silly music video. I think that's why a lot of people, loved it. especially now, loved it. Yeah. I mean, the dancing at the end is, I think, the cherry on top. Oh, yeah. Same, you know, same thing with Hypa Hypa. It's the dancing at the end that a lot of right. people reacting to it were just like, that's or interesting. The, the um, callback dancing at the end of MC Thunder 2, where he does like a couple of the moves from the first one. So yep. Like, mm hmm. <laughs> you and Cliff, here. hey he did the thing <laughs> right like the hip thrust it's like he, he, he did it <laughs> he did the thing I I will say I want to save this until I think we get to 2020 but I'm okay with MC Thunder 2 not having Cadillac in it yeah I but was too at first I was disappointed I'm like oh they didn't do it like a little callback thing but then I think about it it's like MC Thunder is just a series of songs where one dude gets into really exaggerated situations <laughs> just dumb situations right and it's like if that's the, the thing that they want to do with it i'm fine it doesn't need to be a cadillac story they yeah need to continue what happens after he finds the body in the back of the car but they sort of they sort of continued it with the trailers that they had released beforehand which a lot they of people did. didn't know about that's right yeah but in terms of like the actual video i think it's like yeah i'm, I'm fine with that yeah i thought the video was really fun I loved it, but I will say, I think VIP might be my favorite video. Yeah, have. VIP is a the the way that they shot it was really interesting. Right, like just the whole like not point of vision, but like you're still like you feel like there's someone walking around him. Yeah, you know, and, and then when he whips out that guitar with it for the little solo, it's arguably a bad solo. Oh no, it's it's not a it's not a good. But I like, think that was kind of the point it's of it supposed though. Supposed to be a bad solo. Yeah, it, it's definitely. <laughs> They they definitely made that to be bad. I think they made it so it was like, hey, it's a solo that like anyone could play. Yeah, yeah, that's why they gave Sushi a Thunderbird or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that thing can play in drop E. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sushi just had dreadlocks for this album. Yeah, that was weird. That was also weird for me to see. I was like, I don't know how I feel about the dreadlocks. Well, I think. The first picture I ever saw of Sushi was this really, like, horribly lit one with dreadlocks. And I'm thinking, I didn't know Eskimo Cowboy had a black vocalist. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's poor, just poorly lit, yeah. Then, you know, I saw other pictures of him, and I'm like, wait, is that the same guy? Is this, like, yeah, is this still the same guy? When you're getting into a band, you know absolutely nothing about them. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to, like, leech off of the information, like... German websites are providing you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this says, but cool. It's like the video for the scene. Apparently, like, all of the girls in the video have like blood red hair, but in the video it looks purple. Yeah. It's it's, it's, it's a weird lighting situation, but like. Yeah, once again, another Kevin weird lighting. Played Franz in the video. So, was Franz? Did they shoot that part in America? I would assume. No. Everything was shot in Germany. And the part where you see Franz from the back, like mm -hmm. in front of the crowd, yeah. it's all Kevin. No, oh, is it really? Yeah. The only <laughs> time you see Franz's face is a solo frame from yeah. like where I, wherever Franz decided to film it in the U.S. Yeah. But watching the behind the scenes of it on uh, their live album DVD is the funniest thing. Because they're all trying to tell everyone, like, hey, um, guys, can you act like there's a crowd on, like, March in unison? <laughs> and it's like, uh... You're Just pretend like I'm Franz. Right. And it's, <laughs> it's funny because, like, Kevin's just mouthing the words, like, doing, like, the really, like, exaggerated movements that, like, Franz did in the video. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Kevin. Oh, Kevin, you clown. That dude, he's, he's hilarious in every single, like, vlog and video I see him in. He's honestly, like, I will say, like, if if someone told me that Kevin was solely responsible for every single decision that Eskimo Cowboy has ever done, I'd buy it. Oh, yeah. Like, you could tell me that the rest of the band were, like, the most serious guys, but were like, yeah, we believe in Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's cool. He knows what he's doing. Fine with it. Yeah. Um, John, how do you feel about the scene? 
it's good. Like I said, this is where things start to get a little weird, and then they get even more weirder on the next one. Yeah. It, see, I got into them shortly after the scene dropped. So. I, I think I got into them just a little before that, because I remember them releasing MC Thunder as a single and yes, watching that. that. I was able to download the full album. Yeah, I, I think I had just gotten into them, like, maybe six or seven months before that. Yeah. New Age is a weird song now that I'm thinking about it. Is that? I think I know which one that is. Yeah, that that one's a little weird. But, but like, you know, like John said, it, it's, it's, it's where the, it's, it starts to get weird. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, do you guys want to? Do I want to? It? No, but well, actually, do I want to? We can yes. Talk about something else first because I I don't know if John listened to the live album. No, I didn't get the chance to. I don't even know if it's on Spotify. It isn't. No, it's not on okay. Apple either. Okay, because I know I. It's not even on YouTube. I think. Yeah, I I I haven't heard it. So so we can skip know. over that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I I haven't heard right. it. I've heard their live performances, and I think they usually do pretty good live, but... <laughs> if this wasn't the live album, I would agree. Oh, boy. When I first heard Is Anyone Up, because they did it at the end of the set... Oh, yeah. It, it, it's rough. Like it's, it, towards it, They're very much a band that's like, we're going to give our 110% at the beginning and immediately regret it at the end because we're barely able to sustain everything especially because i think their older songs vocally were a little more actually quite a lot more complex yeah like they, they, were they definitely more... there's a lot more straining back then i think i think he does i forget i think it's muffin puppergirk he does the, the breeze at the end yeah but i think sushi who can do pig squeals mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure like... he was the one who did them on the album at least yells or whatever yeah i don't know because see i can never tell the two apart like if we're saying like stuff that isn't like the yelling or the singing right yeah but there was a vip performance where they were like doing like a sound check of is anyone up mm -hmm. and it turned into a competition between sushi and kevin to see who could be the other one to laugh more and like they're both just doing like throwing in random pig squeals like wherever they could and like just like mockingly saying the words instead of like actually doing it. I'll, if I can find the video, I'll send it to you. Yeah, you gotta send that to me if you find it because that sounds awesome. Because like you just have like maybe ten fans just standing like right on top of the band, and they're all just like, "What's going on?" Uh huh. And this is a cool sound check. Right, like it was very <laughs> much like a thing. Like Kevin and Sushi were just having fun. Oh yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this, uh, the scene live in Cologne is fine at the beginning. It, it's, I mean, it's a 17-song album. Oh, God, yeah. And okay. MC Thunder is the very last song. Was that one bad? That one was rough. So, yeah. the last um, five songs are Is Anyone Up Calling Crystal's Best Day and MC Thunder. Which yeah, are they, songs that you should have done at the beginning. But it, then again, they definitely saved why, the best for last there. Right. But yep. it's one of those things that's like, performance-wise... Performance-wise, those are your best songs, so maybe put them more towards the middle at that right. point. Because I think that Encore was Crystal's best day in MC Thunder. If I'm right. Crystal's best day. Interesting choice of Although encore songs. Is the version without, um, I think it's what, Cito or whatever? Cito, I think. Which is a weird version to hear because there is there's a version of it floating around on YouTube somewhere. I think it's, yeah, it's only on YouTube. Only place I've ever been able to find it. I've yet to download it. And it's, but I, it's, it feels like something's missing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we can start talking about rehab. Oh, I was going to say, stop delaying the inevitable. Or actually, I, yeah. You need to talk about Supernova first. Oh, yeah, because when that they... dropped for a video game. 
Yeah, I remember. I distinctly remember you and I talking about it when it dropped. Uh, so disappointed. I yeah, see. I was so I for it. I didn't like it at first. It I mean, grew on like me eventually. Now, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, at first, I had heard it, and I was like, "So if this is Rage Two Edition, which right. was meant to be like a brutal game, so I thought it was going to be, you know, a little heavier." From what but, I remember hearing, the the band said was that the guy that made the game wanted a little bit like softer of a song, like not so much like yelling, like instrumentally it could be aggressive, mm-hmm. but not like vocally. And they said like, yeah, the album version will be heavier. The album version was not heavier. The album no. version is the same version. The exact same, yeah. And that, that That's what disappointed me. Yeah, because that was the first song I went to listen to when the album dropped. I was like, I want to see how different Supernova is. Oh, I think that's what I did too. <laughs> disappointment but i remember hurricane came out because me and my girlfriend listened to it at school in the morning and i'm like this is album of the year hurricane was that was a good song right? they dropped that and i was really confident vocally it was we kind Eskimo. of married like i think yeah. emotion wise like it was rough but like i was like you know what it's it's fine whatever yeah and i was so confident that was album of the year and then they put the teasers up of Rehab. And I'm like, that's a great chorus. That's going to be, uh, you know, not a heavy song, but like, yeah, you know, no. Decent. It, it, <laughs> everything. I, I remember because I bought every version of the CD, every variant. I had Jamie import the EMP variant for me. I wanted to get that one. And it, I was so amped up for this release. It didn't even make my like top 20 albums of the year or whatever. It was in my top 10, but I'm very selective in the music I listen to, so it probably wasn't hard to make top 10. It, I, so, if it was released this year, they wouldn't even be close. No. No, they would be, they'd be so far off if they had released that this year instead of last year, I think. I don't know, 2020 has been lacking for me too. I don't know. I don't know. I keep forgetting some of the releases that come out this year have right. uh, came out this year. Yeah. Like I've, Silverstein, I always forget this year. I feel like that was released two years ago. I would say I, two, I would say last year. I feel like Polaris, I always forget, was released this year as well. Yes, the new Suicide Silence album came out this year too. Oh, man. Oh, I forgot that was even a thing. <laughs> yeah. I remember listening to it at my friend's house. Just to show you, no one cares about them anymore. No, okay, yeah. no. Wow. Um, Become the Hunter. That's a good song. This is a good. I mean, Eddie's, Eddie's a dick, so. I, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? Most, most of the band, <laughs> except Mark's too. No, everybody was good to me. They signed my. They signed my. You can't stop me, except for Eddie. I was gonna say oh, Alex really? had some stuff, but. Yeah, but. I remember in November last year, I showed them a picture of Alex's collection. And they were like, holy shit, that's way too much. <laughs> that's pretty much what Miss May I said about mine. I think They were like, you have everyone? And I was like, everyone? Yeah, I mean, I Sonic Kills has pretty much been, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, thanks. That's it, never. That's yeah. Cool. Born Le- of Osiris, Le- like, like, I remember when I just had the variant collection for vinyl, the vocalist was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a that's a valid response to a variant collection. Yeah, it's, it's, that's cool. <laughs> I think I think Levi was more excited to see my collection than I was. <laughs> and then well, he, because I feel like it's one of the things that's like, maybe like back then, like a few years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Band members never really thought of someone getting every variant. Like, yeah, it's more common, right? Mm-hmm. But like before, it was like, oh. You did that, and that's a thing. <laughs> that's all right. You you got that album five different times. <laughs> you got homesick twenty eight different times. Oh God! <laughs> I can't fun. believe they did that. Victories. Victory won. <laughs> they won my wallet, technically. Actually, no, because most of them I bought secondhand. So. Someone else won your wallet. Yeah. I think kills on your wallet. That's I think kills owns my bank account. Get it right. 
<laughs> they know my they know my routing number and everything. Dude, if I could pay for a subscription where it's like, hey, I get everything, I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. If it was like the one time payment of like, hey, it's gonna be three thousand dollars for the entire year, you're guaranteed one of everything, no matter what, if it's tour merch or if it's on like whatever, I'd do it. So I'd have oh, to yeah. stop finding three thousand sounds way too low though. I guess if it wasn't tour merch, if it was them doing everything else other um, than that, then maybe. This year, not counting um, the thing that's going to be coming up later this year. That's the- and not counting the tour merch. I don't even know what's going on with that right now. And not counting um, – oh, no, that counts last nightmare on the 9th. I'm at, um, I think. It's going to be a concerning number. It really is. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? 3,400. <laughs> not including the next two, two, three not nightmares. Well, wait, no, I figured this out. We have Friday the 13th of November. Nightmare on the 9th for October, November, December. Christmas merch, maybe Halloween merch, and probably two random drops somewhere in between there. So and if they have tour more. merch, they're going to drop that at some point. Too. Plus the, um, I don't want to say club merch, but club merch. Ex- you can say <laughs> exclusive merch. Exclusive club merch. merch. Yeah. Exclusive club merch that you didn't hear from me. What are we talking about? Nothing. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're talking details. details. <laughs> details. <laughs> so... Here's the thing that I never noticed until I listened to the album maybe the seventh time? <laughs> seventh yeah, time right. The seventh, the seventh time. time. The first three songs in Rehab are supposed to be one song. Yeah. I, I hey, sort hey. of realized that as I was listening to it, but I didn't really know if that was the case. I knew Take Me To and Rehab, yeah. Right. But it didn't hit me that It's Going Down is also part of it until I realized, I'm like, wait, it's a one-minute song, and that's the last part of the like the line yeah. in rehab something like that yeah. and it, can we just say it's going down is probably one of the heaviest songs on this album nice boy might have it beat though because <laughs> nice boy has some pretty pretty yeah. brutal screams at the end that's true but if i'm saying like brutality overall second, yeah true like it's going down packs more in that one minute than i think nice boy does in, <laughs> yeah what the three two three minutes, some minutes yeah whatever. I, I will say, this album was very disappointing to me. I, I actually labeled it as my biggest disappointment of 2019. <laughs> I had a lot of big dip- disappointments in 2019, so I don't know if I could say that. Dude, I, ha- I had, like, college disappointments. In <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> because I was hoping on Eskimo Cowboy to, like, make those disappointments a little bit better. <laughs> like, Please oh, we make heard, it go we away. you had a rough year. Here's rehab. <laughs> But honestly, like listening to the album, I don't hate it as much as I always think I do. I I listen to it occasionally. I'll like revisit it and see if I still dislike it as much as I do. And I I I don't really like. I really like okay. For some reason, that song I really like. I, I love okay. Especially the, the breakdown at the end. That breakdown with the bass drop in it is one of those things that's like i want to put it in one of those really obnoxious cars that have like 30 like speakers in oh, it. oh yeah and just have it go off and just see I, what happens i could do that in my car it has upgraded subs well like do that that's and nuts. Me, i mean yeah. i guess it wouldn't i'll take i'll take a video <laughs> yeah, that would i would want to see that in person though oh yeah you'd have to see it like in drive out to pittsburgh for me yeah i got Play you, that man. like 30 second part and then you can go back home. just <clears throat> Feel it in your house. You don't even know I'm there yet. <laughs> I hear it from like a state away. I'm like, oh, he's in Ohio. Oh, he's in Ohio. All right. <laughs> uh, Made by America is honestly a fun song. I. You keep saying you hate this album, but I just do. about every song you're like, yeah, this song's good. This is it, decent. Because as an album, it's, it's a disappointment. Bad. Yeah. Individual songs. I see where they were going with it. I, it's honestly the production throws it off more for me because yeah, 
in Sushi's performance because it literally sounds like he'd be rather doing anything else. Than he recording. sounds really bored. That's There's I think that's no why I don't like that's why I don't like Made by America. It's just in that song, like it's heavy. He just doesn't sound like he's into it. I was gonna say I don't think Kevin's on this album at all, right? He he is a bit. Um there's a few screams where you can tell that they're layered and that they're both doing a separate part. But for the most part, Sushi like pretty much took the reins on this album, I think. Which was disappointing to me because I really like Kevin's screams. I know. I like if they put out a second album of the scene, I would have been down for that. Oh yeah, if they put out a second album like like the, like the scene was i i would like loved if it. the scene was like their sound going forward it's like hey we're gonna have some soft stuff now we're gonna have some like decently heavy stuff but like hey you know it's just gonna be more of a vibe album i'd be down with it but yeah the rehab is and then i, I think it's a joke that i need rehab after rehab by listening yeah. to older albums but like because like i don't want to be the person where it's like oh their new stuff sucks but like, their new stuff kind of sucks. Really did suck. As as far as that went, yeah. But then it's like you listen to like the title track or it's going down or Hurricane, Disbeliever and Okay, like they're all fine. Yeah. You know I think it's just how they put the album together that sort of it's throws that, me off. It's the performance of sushi and it's just And I think the the last two bonus tracks are kind of unnecessary. I, I don't think those needed to be thrown on at all. Um we did not need a piano version of Supernova. No. Like, I get why, <laughs> like, maybe an acoustic. Oh, yeah. I would be down with that. Um, the, what is it, the Electro remix or Electro? Of version? Prism, yeah. It's just, it's not Prism it's weird. Prism's a boring song. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Now, on 2020. Oh, Nico Prism killed is it. Great. <sighs> Nico I know John that. doesn't like Prism on that album. Uh, it just throws me off. It, it, it's weird it, to it's close strong. out the album. Yeah. Yeah, it's jarring. I think it would have worked better as like a track number four. Or if they put if they'd put all the new songs in order and then put the re-releases at the end, that might have worked better. They did. And that's what they did. I but thought they Prison did, they was the last song. It is. Technically, no, I meant like worse. have have the last two songs, like oh, the redo yeah. the Redux is at the end instead. So, so like, Prism, yeah, like Prism is right before that. Like, it's kind of a new song, but it's kind of the older song. Yeah. So, okay. If they had done that instead of just slapping it right at the end. That's, okay, I can see that. I think that may have worked better. Yeah. The other thing, um, I don't, I could not tell you what Lost is. Wait. Lost? Uh, I feel like a reject one. <laughs> Wait. Yep. Yeah. That okay. face, though. It sounds just cringy, man. It is. But it's not bad. That's the thing. They're it's not, not bad. It's terrible. No, they're not <laughs> bad. <laughs> like, they all grow on me, but, like... They grow like a fungus. Right? It's like, it's cool that it's doing that, but I don't want it to. I, I kind of don't want it to do that. <laughs> because every time I go back to it, it's like, oh, I'm going to hate this album. But then, like, I listen to it more and more, I'm like, Okay, I can get into that one. I think I can sing this one. Like, wait, no, what am I doing? A better word is I more, I guess, resent it instead of like, I just don't like it at all. I just sort I don't of. I say I resent it. I think I just had unrealistic expectations. For oh, it. that too. I had a lot of unrealistic expectations for that. Which my girlfriend called me out on when 2020 <laughs> came out and Hypa Hypa dropped and I said, release of the year. And she's like, that's what you said about rehab. I'm like, I know I did. But this is different. different. (laughs) I swear it's different. And then Hate Love came out, and she's like, oh, I like this one better than Hypa Hypa. You might be right. And I'm like, I don't know. Hate Love is okay. But then they dropped MC Thunder too. And I was very confused when I first listened to it. Oh, it was confusing. Because I listened to it, and I'm like, I'm expecting like MC Thunder 1. Right, like Cadillac, like not heavy, not soft, but like you know, just that kind of vibe. No, you, you're just gonna do like the really heavy, like you're gonna put a Brie in like the pre chorus, yeah, like two of them for no reason. It's ballsy, it is because, like, at least hypa hypa, it's like yeah, it's the end, 
Yeah. Having a little fun with it. Yeah, has a lot of fun. 20 different okay. screens. Oh, wait, are, are we, can we officially say we're moving I'm over rehab? I, I think I, I would, I think my final thoughts on rehab is it's not a, it's not a bad album. It's a bad Eskimo Cowboy album, I think. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. I think I've said that before to my girlfriend. I was like, it's, it's a yeah. fine album, but like, if you're going for an Eskimo Cowboy album, yeah, I one. just I didn't like it for an Eskimo Cowboy album, but I think it, as a whole, isn't a terrible album, because yeah. instrumentally it's it's good. They have some it, decent vocal techniques on it, it other than the fact that it's bored. Parts to honestly, like, the instrumentals are fairly heavy. Like it has like the scene like it's a clean heavy. It's my favorite part of the album, I think, is definitely the instrumentals. Yeah. If they put that album out instrumentally, or if Nico was like, yo, you want to record it? it. <laughs> make it heavier. If they made Supernova heavy, I'd be all for I'm, it. Dude, honestly, if they didn't even make it heavy, right? If they just had a vocalist in there that had some enthusiasm, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd be down. But I guess going to 2020... Or MMXX for all you syntax people. Syntax? Yeah. The same people the that Roman numerals? the fall is like one syllable and one breath. Bless fall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm going to try. <laughs> Bless fall. Bless fall. It's more like a sneeze. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, what, what, huh? Bless fall. <laughs> It was, let's be real, they put out Hypa Hypa, and it was a long time before anything else came out. Yeah, I think it was, what, a few months? It was like three months, because there was no album announcement. Yeah, let's see, Hypa Hypa. Hypa Hypa was in June. Yeah. Oh, no, it was, it was only a month. It just seemed like a long time for you and I. Maybe it felt a lot longer, because they also didn't say there would be another single. Yeah, because Hate Love came out July 24th. Sure. Because I remember <laughs> Hyper Hyper came out, and it was fine. And then maybe like a midpoint, they're like, oh, by the way, they're putting out an EP. Yeah, and everyone was like, was Jesus, like, okay. Made that announcement with Hyper Hyper? But... It might have also been, I was going to say, the hype that they had leading up to that song and the, re- like, I guess, revealing of Nico being their new singer. They had hyped that up so much with the vlogs that they were doing. Can we feel like the um, vocalist contest was maybe rigged? Yeah, because they said that they had known him prior. That's the thing. It's like, but then they also had some Russian guy that they toured with do it. And they were like, oh, we really love this guy. Yeah. At the same time, you got to. Kevin did say they wanted someone close by in Germany because they do practice and record a lot. So, yeah. so I get that, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like, did you not have Nico in mind? Yeah. Or like, was it a thing like, you weren't even thinking of Nico, but then you saw his audition and you're like, now he would be the perfect guy for it. I, I sort of feel like that's that's probably what happened. You know, like, you Is they more just like, you know what? It fits him. so much better. He chose an interesting song too. Prism? Like, being like, Prism for your... It, because what, it was Prism, MC Thunder, and Crystals, right? That you could pick from. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I'm, so I'm surprised he chose Prism. I Honestly, though, I think it's kind of smart because he knew that Kevin would do the unclean vocals. Oh, yeah. So I think a lot of vocalists were like, oh, I'll do Crystals because it shows them like, my versatility and whatever. Yeah. But it's like not many people were like, you need you need someone to fill the clean singing in first and foremost. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know he went in. He was like, you know what, this is what you need as a bare minimum. Because I, I think can't give you that. I think Kevin can sing. He's just not great at it. I don't think. I think. I don't want to be. I don't know if this is going to come off as racist. Like the because he's stupid. German, isn't it? <laughs> It's the very stereotypical like, German trying to sing in tune in English. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. He he, because I remember watching the I think sort of live performance they did a Prism. Yeah. Uh, had, where he was sitting there and he sang a little bit of the part at the end. And it's like, mm, you're not you, that you, comfortable with it, are you? you? You could do it, but you got a bit of work. 
Right, like it's one of those things. It's like I'm not going to do it publicly, but like I'll get a vocal coach for it. <laughs> um, can we also say like, not that Sushi's accent came through and stuff. I think it. it on certain words, it did. Like in yeah. prison, there's that one. I forget what word it is. That it's really weird. But can yeah. we just say that it always sounded like he was really trying to pronounce it in English? Yeah. Like he was more worried about the pronunciation than like the overall sound of it like the melody behind it Mm -hmm. but i will say i was expecting hate love to be heavier than hypa hypa i i've i wasn't i remember hearing the teaser and that teaser because they pretty much what teased the breakdown of it they did tease the breakdown that's true and that's why i was like dude this is gonna be the heaviest song on the album which like Hypa Hypa, I wasn't thinking would be that heavy because called Hypa Hypa Rehab. Yeah. Well, oh, I was going to rehab, which is why, like, when they did like the pig squeal at the end, I'm like, oh, they're back, right. back. Oh, they're back. Yeah. Like it's not even like okay, they're back to crystals. They're back to the scene. It's you no, know, we're back to bury me in Vegas era. Oh yeah, we're okay. green again. Almost like it fits the name of the podcast. Is this the first band that we're doing that breathes? I don't know all the bands you guys have done, but from what I've heard, I don't. We've done technically. Ice, technically. Ice Nine Kills hasn't breed, but they've done lower gutturals on the newer stuff. Ice Nine Kills has blacked. Oh, they've blacked a lot. Do they? I Wait. think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think they have. I think it's on the burning. Mm-hmm. I'll find it for you and let you know. Dude, I can't tell you. Bryce, your one. face killed me when he said that. He's like, <laughs> no, because I, I, I might have listened to everything that it's just like numb to me. He's like, I don't. If I'm being honest, I don't listen to Ice Nine Kills that much anymore. Because <laughs> I've overplayed all of their songs, and it's like I could, like I could sit in a room, no music on, and I could tell you the entire song. It's like, oh, uh, the China symbol, right there. A bell, right here. That, that's that's what I do with Eskimo. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't even need it on to be able to listen to it anymore. You just hear it on your head and repeat if you want it. You're going through the discography and you're like, "It's like, yeah, I'm... let's bury the hatchet." And you're like, "That's how I feel about Bust the Fall. I don't really listen to them much anymore either." Right. But it's like you're you're confident, like it's my favorite band. I've listened to them the most. Actually, no. If you look at my top 100 played songs. All three of Hawk's singles are all above at the first three <laughs> spots, and I could not tell you how. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Like, Laura's like, so are you going to collect all of Hawk's merch instead? <laughs> no, but... Maybe. 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 I'll get the shut up, Dad. You're not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. see Thunder 2. MC Thunder, it's just a good song. The weirdest breakdown I've heard in a while. But it works. I don't it, think it's it a, could work on any other song for any other band. No. Honestly. No, it, it's just, it's really unique in the sort of the way that it's like really video gamey. And then it goes into the actual part of the breakdown. Right. Like it's kind of like just this weird fake out, like, okay, it's cool. And then it like does like the little like step up in tempo. It's like it's kind of a breakdown, but not a breakdown. But mm. yeah, and and then it, I wasn't expecting the blech, and then the guttural straight after it that yeah. caught me off guard when I was listening to it. Uh, yeah, honest, like the vocal techniques that they're pulling back on this one. It's like mm. Kevin's just going all at it. Kevin's going out. He's, He's like, I. It's like the old guy. Or it's like the um, meme that's going around, like the I assume the granddaughter like helping the grandmother walk. Oh yeah, let's get you like, home. It's like I used to breathe an Eskimo call boy. It's like sh- sure you did, Kevin. Let's get you home, oh, buddy. I swear. <laughs> I swear I did. My favorite one of those memes is the one I sent the group, which was the uh, Bring With Horizon one. <laughs> Bring With Horizon <laughs> used to be deathcore. Yeah. All right, let's get you home, Grandma. <laughs> I, I will say. One of the better ones I saw, it's like, I used to see you li- bands live. It's like, okay, sure you did. Yeah, I like that one. But it, 
I guess you try it first. I guess we'll go to the um the reduxes. Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't expect for whatever reason I wasn't expecting them to be like re-recorded mm-hmm. versions because like now nah, they're not going to do that they won't go thing, that far back. Right. The thing that always threw me off is like I figured it would be like a part two because <coughs> it's not the full title. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. It's Black You. Come on. <laughs> Black You. Got to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I don't, remove that joke from this podcast. I don't know, man. I think that was a good like metalcore dad joke. Right there. <laughs> That's what that was. I I love dad jokes. Like I love a good dad joke or a pun or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. And it's like I'll say them to my girlfriend. She's like But saying them to other people, you're like dad. should should I have said that? No, it's one of those things that's like she laughs and it's like Are you laughing because it's funny or are you laughing because it's like I'm stuck with this guy? <laughs> I'm shit. <laughs> five years into this i can't back out now i can't yeah i can't just back out of this <laughs> i gotta deal with these jokes but yeah like because a drama queen is just drama queen not hey mrs drama queen so it's like yeah and i oh i heard both things people are like oh it's a part two and it's like no it's a re-recording it's like i'm happy yeah, I, I heard both and i was i was more okay with them doing like a a part different two. like sequel yeah like part two to it, it. to me the thing is, like, the self-titled EP, the production is fine. It oh, yeah. Job. It doesn't yeah. need it. Unless you want to say, hey, Nico can do it. Which he did, he admittedly. Ch- dude, it's, yeah, it's drama queen because Sushi yells or does, like, the unclean, like, kind of, like, raspy yelling kind of vocals for drama queen. Hearing Nico sing it instead, like, with, Kevin kind of doing a little bit of uncleans with it. Yeah. I, made me like it a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I think I, I just barely would say that I like Drama Queen more than the original. But like what? I... They kept the girl vocals or whatever you want to call them. They were clearly... Oh, yeah. The, girl, the part but... of... Yeah. The... Yeah, you ain't too much. Na, 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 na. That part was funny. I was not expecting that to make a comeback, to be honest. No. Like, they kept it authentic. The only thing I, like, they took out the two lines in uh, Mustache, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that flies that well today. No. Yeah. No, you, you can't I mean, you can you can't make say the that. argue it's like, it already exists, and, like, we should keep art as is. You can make that argument. But I think they went the safer route. I think it's also... They could probably make the they live in Germany argument as well. Cause it's more of an American honestly, it's it is more of an American issue at the moment than it is pretty much it's, anywhere it's else. It's a worldwide world. thing, but like if we're saying yeah. it's like maybe fifty percent it's more diluted everywhere else, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But it's I would still say so. like it's it's still a thing, right? So um, I I think I'm glad they went the safer route, especially yeah. with people hearing hype a hypo and a lot more people coming into the band because they would have gotten canceled within like yeah he, five hearing months. that i think would not have heard well someone, i remember someone shared the mc thunder 2 video to the unfd social group and someone said i don't know why but this kind of feels racist to me like, i think i saw that on reddit too something similar they originally yeah. wanted to go to japan and do it right but like guess what can't because I remember they Can't put up like an urgent ISO for like what like sports cars or like what something like, like that, yeah. It was someone that owned like two sports cars or like two people that own sports cars or whatever, and mm-hmm. you could be in the video for it. The, I mean, the, the video is fine. Yeah, the video the video like, is just goofy. It has the weird like Power Ranger <laughs> rip off thing at the end that, that, that's like the very like okay it's very like sentai very like this is what japanese no it's not what japanese culture is but like what japanese like tv shows are to a point like in yeah that genre of it of like it's very i don't know it it definitely they were trying to sort of i think get the point across right. in a way it kind of i don't want to say it's not making fun of it no, no, they definitely weren't making fun it's of it. It's making a light of it, I think. Yeah, I think you know? it seems like with them, especially with how sort of goofy they are, that they are more appreciating that art instead of making fun of it. Right, because like, if it was like, if Ice Nine Kills did it, right, then it's yeah. 
Mm, It'd just be weird. That's weird. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> especially you know, like, <laughs> he went to a ramen place, and it's like, it's not like it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Honestly. Um, the only thing I wish in Mustache is they would have kept the um, German Eskimo cowboy and then like the year. Oh, yeah, just done 2020. It was like, you could have easily said the same thing and just said 2020. Yeah. You know? It, it just feels, it really it feels, feels like, like something's missing when you listen to the new version. John, what do you, what do you think? Like, do you think something's, like, do you, would you like to see them say? Eskimo Cowboy 2020, like, is the throwback line to it? Yeah, probably. But I wonder if that ever came across for them. Like, if that was even an option of, like, maybe it just didn't work? I think I it may it may have also just sounded a little weird. Because I think 20 has more <laughs> syllables in German than 10 did. Well, yeah, because it's... 2010 has less syllables than 2020. If I'm right. Could be wrong. I'm like going through the German numbers in my head because I can't remember. We'll sit here until you get to 2020. I don't remember what 2000 is. I know what 20 is. Okay, well, what's 20? 20 is Zweizig, isn't it? Yeah, Zweizig. No, that would have. Zweizig, yeah. Yeah, that would have. Wait, what's 10? Uh, Zen. Zen, Zen, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so it would have been one more syllable. Yeah, because back with Spy Thousand Sand, it'd be Spy Thousand Sponsig, I think. It's, it's, it sounds a little weird. There's enough of a break between that and before the lyrics even start that, like. I also, my one sort of complaint is I really like the synth on the original EP. I think they sort of, in a way, dumbed it down. I feel this. like it's too polished. It doesn't sound as full. Yeah. Like, it feels like. You know how you have Sprite, but then like you open it and you go back to it at the end of the day where it's like, it's not flat, but yeah. it's kind of flat. Or if you just had McDonald's Sprite compared to bottled Sprite, there is a very clear difference. It is, but one's clearly better than the other. It's definitely McDonald's. They know what they're doing with their Sprite. <laughs> okay, well, um, I mean, Prism, we kind of touched on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think if they just reworked where they put that in the EP, it would work a little bit better for me, personally. I don't know. When I'm, it, I'm when surprised it, it, it that the they actually put it on the album. That's true. Thank but, you for being honest. But. but for me, it's you get five hard hitters, and then it rolls off at the end. Yeah. I then, I, like then I start heavy. losing a little bit of interest. Right. Like, heavy-wise, this is on the same level as like bury me in vegas and stuff like that yeah oh yeah i think yeah bury me in vegas i I, i'm just excited i can't wait to see what they do for their actual full length yeah because if it literally is just like this times two i'm perfectly okay with that it might be times three because yeah the being was what because it's only 13 songs, 14 with the deluxe. Yeah, and this is technically only three new songs. So yeah, times four would be more likely. Right. I was even saying if you wanted to say even the reduxes. Yeah, even if you're saying the reduxes, yeah, like, that's That would true. be what? 15. Figure 15 as a deluxe version. Yeah, 15 as a deluxe version. I, dude, I would take a 15 song album of this. Oh yeah. Maybe okay. throw in like one or two that it's just like Nico doing his thing, whatever. Yeah. I, I'd like I to see him do a like, weird song. I want to see him do like something that's like like too fat, too furious, right? Yeah. Like something as ridiculous as that, but just him singing it. Like, yeah. No Kevin, just because I feel like Nico is kind of more of a serious person, right? Yeah, he seems like it. <laughs> and I would love to see Kevin be like, hey, do this. Too fat, too furious, part two. Yeah. Let's go. Too Fat, Too Furious too. Oh, why is that not a thing? <laughs> it needs to be a thing. Uh, we'll just email Kevin. Hey, have a proposal. Yeah, right. Too Fat, Too Furious too. too. The need to get fatter. The, yeah, Too Fat, Too Furious too. Fatter. Uh, 
but honestly, like, if we're saying a band's discography, for a band being around for 10 years, oh yeah, having two member changes, and really their only flaw as an album is that it sounds bad in terms of production and vocal performance. Mm-hmm. That's a solid run. And they've also released consistently. You know, 2010, yeah. 12, 14, 12, 14, and then even 15. 15. They did two albums in two years. Yeah. So they, they've I mean, been going they very consistently. Rehab, dude, it's yeah. insane because it's Rehab 2020 and then next year another oh, one yeah wow yeah they're yeah, just pumping two. out music <laughs> i actually don't i can't really think of another band that's done that recently dance cam dance oh or last night oh no, our last night did two eps that are supposed to be a full album together and but they did just put out a new single i don't know what's going on oh. another cut <laughs> yet another Hey, I mean, they're making money at it. They're having yeah. fun. And you know what? They, I mean, they even said in, I don't know if you guys have watched the interview that they did with Finn McKinty. No. It, no. Dude, that's like, as a business major for entertainment, that is like, if you could sit everyone down that like talks crap about our last night, get them to watch that interview and be like, hey, this is what bands need to do. Then, yeah, because you know, it's like they even said we make covers so that we can not have like daily jobs. Mm-hmm. Like we have covers, we make money from it. That's it. That money goes into original stuff that goes into production. You know, that goes into. I think they said like, I don't know if it's once a week. They used to have like VIP dinners with fans. Like they would pick like, four or five fans like out of their patreon and it's like hey we're all gonna meet up go to dinner you know stuff like that so it's like they know how to run a band as a business oh yeah and if more like you do need to have like the heart in it for the art right Mm -hmm. but having heart and just doing it for the sake of being art if you want this to be a career it's not gonna yeah that's cut it you need to run it as a business at the end of the day Mm-hmm. you know it's not like oh hey you want a free cd here you go it's free promotion no you just took a loss on every other cd that you're selling yeah but i mean but as long as everyone wants to just hate them for covers whatever <laughs> <laughs> which honestly the covers aren't even that bad they're just more bare bones like yeah I, there's, yeah. too, there's too many of them. There yeah. is too many, in my opinion. I tried, I tried to make an album and download all of them, but when I got to like 30, I'm like, no, I'm never oh going to listen to it. Yeah, oh there, there's God. just there's too many, and I get so lost. And it's just, I like the one Craig Owens is on. Lost I like the one, what was the one the Franz was on? Attilian and Luke Holland. Yeah, that, was, yeah. that, that was Rockstar, wasn't it? I don't know, maybe. I enjoyed that one. I enjoyed their Katy Perry. It cover. was a Post Malone cover. I knew that. Uh, but they have some good covers, like honestly. They did the Nick Tunes one, and that one I was like, it was I, don't know, I mean, that was, I always felt like that was more like a Jared Dines video kind of thing where it's like, yeah. this isn't a serious Andrew thing. got it right. What? It was better now that had Franz okay, and yeah. Tilly and everybody on it. That was a good one, though. I think they're collaborative covers. For me, I enjoy it a little bit more. But. I, don't know, I just think there's too many, and I, I get overwhelmed, and it's just not for me. Yeah, I tried to what? get into it. I did. Oh, I forgot I placed it. What'd you do? So before, <laughs> well, how about this? I'll tell you after the podcast ends. Okay. Because then that'll, I'll be able to talk about some other stuff that I will make more sense. <laughs> Just know I now owe someone seventy five dollars. Oh, I have nowhere. As a joke, I put that offer as a. Mm. Well, one item down on the Born of Osiris variant collection. Oh boy, you live and you learn. 
Is it a blue one? <laughs> what? Blue one? Blue one? Of a higher place, yeah. Yep. So now you need the yellow, right? No, I still need both of the variants for the new rain. Gotcha. Someone was supposed to sell me the blue new rain before they moved on October 1st. I'm going to hit him up soon and be like, hey, do you want to sell it earlier? Because like no one's selling me it. Give me that shit. I will say I've owned that record three times. Oh, man. How about you just stop and, getting rid of it? Dude, no, because the first <laughs> no, I, I bought it for a variant collection. And then I think I was doing a day to remember. And I'm like, there's, I listened to a day to remember way more than Morning Cyrus. So I'm like, unfortunately, I'm going to part with the band that got me into metal. Oh. You know, and like after like two, after a year of not having it, I'm like, I want it. I want it back. <laughs> so I bought it. I think it was like both copies of the new rain off of Discogs for like 110 each. Got them in, got a couple other things. <laughs> and then I was sitting there, I'm like, Ice Nine Kills put up more merch. Bye. <laughs> Did you at least make a profit off of them? No, I took a massive loss on it. Damn. I think I I think I finally was able to sell the new rain for seventy five. Oh, but that was before boy. the blue one was really hitting like 110. Like that's when the blue one was like still under 100. Oh, see, so, the only was, two I've only ever listened to, I think, two Born of Osiris albums fully, and it's Tomorrow We Die Alive and The Curse, The Accursed. Because I I saw them when they were touring with Chelsea Grin for their newest album. That was oh that was a that tour. sick tour. I, because normally I will not go to a tour. I don't want to say unless I spend kills is on it, but I spend so much money on merch that I don't go to shows and all yeah, that yeah. I don't have a massive drive to see bands. Right, Born of Osiris was the only band that I ever said, I'll, I'll I'm going to see them. Yeah, and I went to the tour that they did with August Burns Red who I don't like at all. But I'm like, I'll do it. But they were also the direct supports. So like they had a, an hour or so, so. I have a guitar signed by August Burns Red, so I can't exactly say that. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my proudest items I own. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking around. It's like, oh, I could do that. or to... Yeah, one on me. One on me. <laughs> no, see, it's not about one up. <laughs> what item do I want to use to one up them with? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's which one do I want to use? It's like, do I go Ice Nine Kills? But then it's like, I always talk about Ice Nine Kills. It's like, I can I have, do the Day to Remember EP, but someone else has that too. Yeah, I have Creation Destruction. I know. Signed if by you Bobby. want to do a, do a Day to Remember, you do the one track demo you got that I haven't oh. ripped yet, and I haven't listened to the song. Oh. Oh, yeah, you, you need to rip that and send that to me in a high quality. I can Thank only you. rip it at 320. That's perfect. As long as it's not YouTube. <laughs> as long as it's not YouTube. I mean, Zach, what record's 20. on the wall? What? Zach, what record is on the wall? That is uh, retrograde? retrograde, yeah. I knew that. That's and then. The variant collection I saw. <laughs> on my other wall, I have <laughs> Ocean's 8 Alaska, Day Seeker, and Fit for a King. Nice. Do you have anything behind the vinyl, or is it just no? Like on the wall? It, it's it's it. I just stuck a pin through it, like through the middle of it, and it just holds it there. All right. I have a different <laughs> copy that I actually kind of listen to. So all right, that's fair. This one, this one was just one I got for free during that Rise event. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I got absolutely nothing good during that. Oh no! A lot of people I got, a got Kevin Seconds test press. I got three copies of the worst of Mice and Men record. Yeah, I would have taken three copies of that over like the ten placebo records I got. Oh, I got a, I, I got three placebos. I think I only got one placebo. I, I got, got Galactic I got like Empire. Four. That was that. Nice. I would have been okay with that. That would have been dope. I got I one got, and two from them. Oh three. damn, man! Is it Parables or what was that weird? Like it's like that blue album that everyone was getting. It was like the translucent blue with like the orange and green splatter. Oh, uh, 
I actually think I have that one on the wall just because it looks uh, cool. Royal, um, Royal, uh, Royal Crown? I think Royal something. Royal Ocean? I don't know. Whatever. That's... Hold on, I'm actually curious. Oh, let me see. I have them put in my discogs in a certain way, I can tell oh. you. I was thinking of the gospel youth, always lose, or something like that. Yeah, I got that one, too. Blue and yellow splatter, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have so many people that have tried to buy my creation destruction from me, though, and I'm like, no, you can't have it. Can I have it? No. I won't sell it for a week. <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least a week. Okay. I can promise you it'll be safe until the first. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how much I can promise. I almost sold my slave to nothing, but I figured I'd regret it if I did. Yeah, there there is some stuff now that it's like, yeah, I'm not selling it. Like whenever I put all my Eskimo cowboy stuff up for sale, so I'm like, it's gonna be another rehab. And then I think I took it down the same night I put it up. I'm like, I I don't know yet. And yeah. then shortly after hype hype came out, and I'm like. I'm not done yet. <laughs> not done yet. <laughs> I still, I, the thing with them is like, there's no market for it. No mm-hmm. one cares. If I'm going to sell it, not I would in America. sell it to you. Yeah, not in America, you no. Know? In Germany, there's, if they released, I think, like, if they put out a German exclusive uh, Bury Me in Vegas variant, it would probably be gone within the day, I would guess. If yeah. it was German exclusive, yeah. I mean, look how fast... They're growing quick. 2020 sold out. Like yeah. all three. I actually I don't know if the Australian one sold out. I haven't checked the site. I haven't checked them one either. But I just know I got it early on. Sold out insanely fast. I went to bed and woke up one one morning and he had bought it. So I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because you said you wanted it, and I'm like. Yeah, I know. I was gonna. Dude, I was so it, but then house came up. Because I was on there web store and I'm like it's just a CD yeah, yeah. this is all they're doing I'm gonna mm. oh yeah I was scared I was honestly yeah, I was really worried like one drop like maybe not like four variants but like at least two right mm-hmm. because I figured one on Century Media one on their web store and one on Empiricon yeah nothing and then like well like a week later they're like here's a vinyl of this and the self-titled EP which I feel like no one ever asked for, except for me. <laughs> the only time I ever brought that up on vinyl was me asking the guy that runs Wax Vessel if that would count. And we had <laughs> does to... this count? <laughs> well, no, because we were debating it because it's like it is MySpace. It came out on MySpace, but it's like True. the very, very end of like that MySpace era kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, would it count? I think was the consensus no. The consensus was we didn't know. And oh, then, oh, like we can't, I always brought up the Irish front instead. Yeah. But oh yeah. Kind of glad he didn't press it because that, there's no like I would have, have got it. Variant collection. No, you would not have got it. Unless. You. I mean, I, you would have got it, but for eighty bucks after I mean, the maybe, fact. Unless 80. Nick would have. And maybe more, depending on who. If they know Bryce and if they like him, maybe. Maybe 80. Maybe. I don't know. But, like, maybe if, like, Nick knew that, like, oh, hey, here's the guy that proposed the idea and he has a variant collection, I'll save it for him. Because some people have gotten full sets directly from the owner. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's, like, I don't know how. Like, I assume, like, it's, like, a favor, like, he's repaying them for something. Yeah. It's, like, no, that's fine. I have no beef with that. So it's like, hey, Nick, can I be your indentured servant like a month before you drop Eskimo Cowboy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I like. There's nothing on there that I've cared about. Yeah, like I've said, I'm younger than you by three years-ish, and then I'm much younger than you two, I'd assume. So a lot <laughs> yeah, of that stuff. Pushing 30 yeah. off. A lot of that stuff from that sort of MySpace era, I was not in it's that for. I, keep in mind, I grew up technically with like bands like Monuments and Born of Osiris and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I grew up with, I think my top three were like probably Red Hot Chili Peppers, Avenged Sevenfold, and Slipknot were the top three for the longest okay, time. We're, okay, if we're saying like middle school grown up with them, because I was saying like high school. Oh, high school. we're saying like Three Days Grace... Oh yeah, that too. 
Mm -hmm. Like, whatever, like, avenged, I guess. Look at him. He's like, you kiddies. Yeah. Back in my days, Metallica. Look, to be fair, I didn't have parents or, like, older siblings or even friends that listened to any of that stuff. I found it through, like... My dad liked jazz. My dad was heavy into jazz, so that was what he tried to give me. (laughs) My mother was Garth Brooks and Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, my mom loved country music, and I was I was younger. I was like, "Nah, I can't do it, man." My dad was all like '70s stuff, and my mom was like, "Whatever, like modern pop, like 2000s pop and rock, like All American Rejects, like Katy Perry stuff, like that." Oh yeah, my mom loved uh, loved the "Since You've Been Gone" cover by Day to Remember. She absolutely. She was like, "I love this song more than the original." I was like, "Yeah." I enjoy both. I think. But yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> My mom was very vocal about it. Oh, do you want to call it there then? Yep, yeah, we'll call it there. That was a good two That's hours. So hey. No, it's good man. It's eleven. Th- ah, imagine being in the future. It's early. <laughs> I can tell you that nothing exciting happens. The next hour you're safe. Oh, okay. Thank God. And for Andrew, the next three hours, you're safe. (laughs) You're good, man.